Hello, this is Reza from Red Acad. In this video, I'm going to give you an updated information about what is Power BI Dataflow and why you should use it. I created a video for that three years ago. Now things have changed in Power BI Dataflows. So an overview of what it is, why you should use it. Uh, let's talk about it. To learn about uh, data flows, um, first you need to know what is the transformation engine in Power BI. So in Power BI, we do the data transformation using uh, Power Query. Now data flow is kind of using that Power Query to do the data transformation, but it runs it online. So data flow pretty much is an online uh, or in service in cloud data transformation service that runs independent from Power BI dataset. The word independent is quite important in this case because um, when we do that transformation um, in normal Power BI dataset, it loads the data inside Power BI dataset. So you might say, well, I create my Power BI uh, file in Power BI desktop, then I publish it to the service and I schedule it to refresh, so it is Power Query online running. No, that is uh, not power, uh, that is not data flow. It is Power Query online, but it's not a data flow because data flow stores it um, independent from Power BI dataset. It doesn't load it directly into a Power BI dataset. And that is one of the things that makes it different. So uh, first thing to know about it is that Dataflow is a service only object. You cannot create it inside Power BI desktop. You have to create it inside Power BI service or if you are creating other types of data flows in Power Apps or other areas as well. Uh, and um, as I just mentioned about it, uh, Power, BI Power BI data flow is just one of the data flows. You can create data flows in Power Apps and a few other places as well. So it's not just limited to Power BI. Uh, in fact, calling it Power BI data flow might not be a good name. You might just call it a data flow or Power Query data flow or whatever name that you might uh, like to uh, use for that. Now, uh, where the data is stored, we talked about this being independent from uh, Power BI dataset. So when it is independent from Power BI dataset, then it means that it does not store it, store the data inside Power BI dataset, it stores it somewhere else. So it stores it in Azure Data Lake Storage, Gen 2, and it also stores it in Dataverse. These are the two um, types of data storage at the moment, at the time of creating this video, but there are some uh, work uh, happening behind the scene for Power BI. And if you look at the um, release wave two of 2022 of Power BI, they mentioned that uh, there will be a storage options for Azure SQL database, for um, SharePoint, and I'm sure there will be other options in the future as well. So at the moment, just two storage options, but in the future, there will be more storage options. And other services can either connect to these storage options or they can connect to the data flow itself, depends on the type of license you got and how you are using these storage options. Um, standard uh, versus analytical data flow. We don't normally categorize data flows by saying this is Power BI data flows or Power Platform data flows. Those are mainly the platforms in which we go and create data flows. We categorize data flows by their functionality, analytical data flow versus standard data flow. Standard data flow has some normal standard features of data transformations. It stores the data inside Dataverse versus analytical data flow usually uses more analytical power. You can use computed entity for um, uh, heavier transformations. You can use things such as AI functionality and Azure Data Lake storage backend. Um, that is normally used for more uh, analy analytical data needs. And the type of data flow that you create from Power BI normally is an analytical data flow. You cannot create a standard data flow inside Power BI. You create those in Power Platform. Um, I have a different article about it. If you are interested, you can go and learn more about it. Now, Dataflow is also powered by Power Query Online, which is quite important because uh, all the transformations you do in Power BI, that means you can do them in Power Query Online or in Dataflow as well. Uh, the data sources that you have, we have more than 80 different data sources for uh, data flows that you can get data from it. Some of those you require to have a gateway setup. Some of those it would be just working without gateway. 
Uh, and once you bring that data into the data flow, you can do the data transformation using the Power Query Online, which is similar to the Power Query Editor in Power BI Desktop, but it might even have more um, graphical options like what you see in this view that shows the diagram view, which is much nicer than the desktop view. Even if you don't see some of the transformations here, you can still apply it. Um, there are many transformations you can do using the transform, the um, usual um, graphical interface, or you can use the M script to write some of your transformations as well. And finally, you do that transformation, you create the data flow, you store the data in Azure Data Lake Storage, Dataverse, or whatever storage that becomes available later you can now connect to that data flow using Power BI, get data from Power BI data flow or just normal data flow, Power Platform data flows, or even in Excel, get data from data flow. It gives you option to get from Power Platform data flows or Power BI data flows. The Excel version is more recent. Now, what are the use cases of Dataflow? So you learned that Dataflow is a, tra is a data transformation service run in cloud, stores the data in, a in a storage in cloud. Now, what is the use case of that? I'll show you through a few sample scenarios. The first sample scenario is what uh, that happens a lot if you are building multiple Power BI files. Let's say you've been developer of a Power BI solution. You create a sales Power BI report. Now you want to I mean, in that sales Power BI report, you have spent time to create your customer table, your product table, your date table, probably some other tables as well, as well as your fact tables, which has all the sales transactions. And you deliver it to the sales team. They are happy with that. Then after a few months, you get a request from the warehouse team. They come and say, we want a report for our inventory system. And because they are totally different groups, you are creating a new Power BI file for this group of people. Uh, and in this Power BI file, you have different set of tables. You have warehouse table, inventory table, um, but you also have some tables that you have used in the sales data set, such as product table or date table. And you have spent some time to create these in the original uh, PBIX file. So what do you do? Do you just copy that M script from the sales PBIX to the inventory PBIX? You can do that, but then when you do it, the problem is that you have two versions of the source code. You have to maintain these two versions of the source code. Anytime you go and change this, you have to go and change that. What if you have three files? What if you have five files using one table? So creating copies of that is not a good idea. Now using Dataflow, you can actually run those um, transformations in cloud for those shared tables, date table, product table, any tables that you think might be used in more, more than one files. You process that in data flows. It can be in one data flow or it can be in multiple data flows. Then using different Power BI files, you go and get data from those. The beauty of these is that, well, uh, your data flow is just processing that file once. The source code is in one place. If you go and change it, all other files that are using it would also have up-to-date information anytime you refresh them. Um, so it's much more, much easier to maintain a solution like that. So one use case of that is if you are using a table, sharing it between multiple files, data flow is definitely helpful. And remember that it's not just between different Power BI files, it is also between Power BI and Excel as well. Uh, there are other useful uh, cases for that as well. Another one of that is faster refresh time in your development environment. Let's say it takes a long time to do the full refresh of your Power BI desktop file because it is also doing some of the heavy lifting transformations. But what if the transformations, heavy lifting transformations done in the Power BI service using Dataflow and then Power BI just imports data, ingests data from the result of that data flow. That would make it much faster. The overall refresh time is still the same, but your Power BI desktop refresh time is faster. You can use this approach to create like a data warehouse. Not every company has a uh, back end or let's say an environment that they can build a data warehouse and feed data to that using services such as Azure Data Factory, SSIS. Now you can use 
uh, whatever you use for data transformation right now in Power BI, which is Power Query, but run it using Dataflow and builds your data warehouse, which is your fact table, dimension tables, that star schema design dimensional model inside Azure Data Lake Story. Now, if you are using Dataflow for this approach, I would strongly suggest you to take a look at Data Mart. Power BI Data Mart is a new component introduced recently, which will combine these two together. It will give you the Azure Data uh, Azure SQL database as the storage option with the data flow uh, to feed data into that. So that can be a better option if you are creating a data warehouse. Uh, so in general, uh, data flow uh, is a data transformation on cloud. It runs in cloud independent from Power BI. It is not just for Power BI. It is empowered using the data transformation options. We have empowered query, all the sources that we have, the data transformation. Some of them are not available, but most of them are available in there. Um, data flow can be used for situations that you have shared tables, for creating like a dimensional storage, for making your refresh time faster, for isolating the data source from the rest of the transformation, to create an ETL layer separately from the rest of your Power BI solutions, it comes with a lot of benefits. And I have mentioned some of these in the article that is related to this video. Um, if you are interested to learn more about Dataflow, I have other videos and articles, go and check them out and let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below. I would be more than happy to know about your comments. Until the next video, have fun.